Welcome to SAI TV. This is Fanyo Mwindi, and thank you for stopping by. So for this week, let's get you started on the right foot. First up, the annual World Economic Forum in Davos just wrapped up on January 20th. Lots of fascinating conversations there. Some of the sessions are available online, so do check them out. One in particular that you may consider checking out is a panel discussion titled Doubling Down on Science that focused on collaboration across borders, cultures, and disciplines to find solutions to the world's biggest challenges. How do we do that? And so this panel featured uh, scientists, scientific leaders who are involved in leading large collaborative research efforts across borders and fields. And so really enjoyed listening to some of their insights. I encourage you to check that out. Again, it is available for free on their website. Next up, Amazon is wrapping up its Amazon Smile charitable donation program. If you have not heard of this, it's a great program that allows nonprofits essentially to get a small percentage of eligible purchases. When people make a purchase, they, they get a small percentage um, of the proceedings. So that program is getting shut down next month from what we hear. Um, I think it's going to affect a lot of nonprofit organizations that are using the program. We're already seeing chatter about some of them that are not happy about this. Uh, we ourselves have actually used it uh, from time to time. Um, however, again, the percentages that Amazon gives out is really, really tiny. And uh, from what we're hearing, citing Amazon, that's essentially lack of impact is what led. And as you all know, the economic conditions right now are tough for many of these tech giants. And so we anticipate a lot of these STEM engagement um, nonprofits that may be using Amazon Smile will be affected. And if you were not aware of this, do look into your numbers um, as soon as you can. Okay, and next up, $1,000 outreach grants. If you're looking for uh, some money to do some STEM outreach efforts out there, well, you're in luck because today, today, January 23rd, the American Society for Cell Biology, the ASCB, uh, is wrapping up its grant program. Uh, the deadline, not sure what time, but it's ending up today. So you should go on their website and apply if you believe you have to be a member, but do double check that. Um, it's a great program. Um, what their aim is simple. Remote science outreach projects, student lab visits, science fairs, and other ideas that engage the public. Full disclosure, SAI was a recipient about two years ago. Learned a ton. Great organization. Um, but do check them out. Great community there as well. Um, it's a great initiative. And there may be others as well. So you need to be looking out uh, for those. And so that gets you going for the week. There's three updates. And so with that, let us do the numbers. So what you're looking at here essentially are some of the metrics on the hashtag SciCon. Uh, on Twitter. So what we're trying to do here is to look at the activity, engagement activity on this really important hashtag that is widely used by many people. So what we hope to do essentially is to take a look at essentially kind of like the stock market the engagement market for this hashtag to see or to get a pulse on what's going out there. What are people talking about? And so from what you're seeing here, um, it's different dimensions of the hashtag where people are posting from uh, who are the biggest movers over the past seven days so this is the key it's looking at seven days in the past we hope to be able to showcase some predictive uh, analytics in the future uh, we can show you some of those um, analytics and, and and how the hashtag is performing so this is purely experimental so uh, stay with us as we continue to uh, experiment on the, on the initiative Okay, so here's a question for you. How can nonprofit STEM engagement and initiatives prepare for uncertain times? As you all know, if you're not aware, we are entering into some really un unstable times, right? Um, economy, you're hearing about job cuts, you're hearing a lot of um, companies that are being more restrictive. Um, so this is impacting all sectors. For profit, non profit, in fact, probably non profit being even more negatively affected 
by what's happening out there uh, in the market. So we asked the CEO of First Up, Lindsay Colin Wilson, who actually joined us previously, and she shared some really cool insights. So she's back. She is back to give us some additional insights on leaders that are leading nonprofit organizations and how you can think about navigating these uncertain times. I'll see you back in just a moment. Hello everyone, my name is Lindsay Collins Wilson and I'm the CEO of First Star, a national nonprofit. Uh, we work uh, in 10 states. We support academies, we support young people in care. Uh, we started in 1999 and we transitioned into direct service work in 2011. Our first site was at UCLA. Um, the question around the recession um, is a big one and an important one. And I have certainly uh, been working with my executive team um, and with mentors in determining what is the best step that our organization needs to take and in general, nonprofits need to be mindful of. So uh, when there's a recession, you absolutely have to be um, intentional with your financial projections um, and you have to be mindful of the disruption in cash flow that your organization may expect to receive, whether it's cyclical at different points throughout the year, or the total amount that you expect to come in during the fiscal year um, that may not come in when you are, when we're approaching a recession or in a recession. Um, so what we're doing at First Star is A, we've acknowledged that a recession is, 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 is possible. Um, and as a result, we have uh, created financial projections that fit a scenario that would require us to reduce particular uh, cost um, within the organization. Um, it has required us to um, pause uh, hiring additional staff members until we're clear on um, whether or not we will enter into a recession and while in the recession, um, what the impact of the recession will be. And, and that is all determined more in real time than it is a year out or six months out. Um, so we've had to be mindful um, in that way. We also have to be mindful of how the recession impacts the young people we serve, as well as the staff that work for the organization. And in doing so, um, we, have created, and, and we've done this in the past, especially around COVID, we created a short-term strategic plan that um, allowed us to be nimble, um, but also um, ensured that the team was clear about what the practices and the policies would be um, to uh, keep our organization afloat um, and to hopefully um, and to ensure that our students were being served properly, uh, even in the midst of, of economic uncertainty. And so those are those are just a few things that we work on here at First Start when we know a recession is coming. And generally, I think good practice for a nonprofit is um, that they a are um, in tune with the uh, with the economy, um, and that when there are projections such as a recession. Um, looming, that they work closely with their executive team, their board, uh, members of their board um, that work in finance to um, create or develop a financial, their financial projections for the next year, and also determine how their financial ratios will adjust um, to ensure that the organization can maintain itself even in uh, the face of uh, possibly uh, less revenue. Um, and also that you are always thinking about your mission and what is your bottom line. And that is the young people or the individuals you serve within a nonprofit and ensuring that um, your organization uh, is able to do and support um, your population highest and best through a difficult and challenging time. All right, that's all we got for today. Thank you so much for joining and I look forward to seeing you next week. This was Fanny